Welcome to Moots Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the vintage skits from Saturday Night Live that could serve as a primer for that show's classic history. I hope I've made my point. Number 10. Wayne's World Saturday Night Live has turned a number of its sketches into films over the years, but very few of them have entered the zeitgeist of pop culture in the same fashion as Wayne's World. Welcome to Wayne's World. I'm your excellent host, Wayne Campbell. With me, as always, is Garth. You party on, Wayne. <laughs> All right, party on, Garth. This recurring SNL skit featured Mike Myers and Dana Carvey as Wayne Campbell and Garth Algar, two enthusiastic headbangers on a search for riffs and chicks. Barry, you're a roadie, right? It must be Chick Central for you. Yeah, you must be a citizen of Babylon. The skit focused on the pair's cable access show, Wayne's World, making the most out of Myers and Carvey's natural charisma, comic timing, and joint chemistry. Okay, the next category is Best Actress. Okay, you don't have to do that every time. Oh, good, I was starting to hyperventilate. There are a few SNL skits out there that capture the spirit of the late 80s and early 90s better than this one. And that's a compliment. Okay, and finally, we saw one more movie. It was called Live from New York! It's Saturday Night! Number 9. Gumby. The Gumby Story Film. Only a performer as innately talented as Eddie Murphy could bring such an anarchic sense of craziness to the wholesome character of Gumby. You're playing Gumby as a young man, all right? And Gumby is not a garbage mouth, okay? All right, but what's my motivation? Your motivation is not for me to rip your lungs out, okay? That feeling of chaos is doubled when Murphy is playing Gumby as a stereotypically demanding writer-director of his life story. Cut! Who is talking on my set? Who the hell is talking on my set? The Gumby story film leans heavily into broad humour and in-jokes about set life and the Hollywood system, while always remaining funny. Yeah, that's it. That's a wrap for the day. Okay, tomorrow we move on to the pokey years. Everybody out. <laughs> Murphy, as expected, is truly great and makes this wild scenario work with his off-the-cuff comic timing. After all, he's Gumby, damn it, and we just can't get enough. You ruined me! Number 8. President Reagan Mastermind It speaks volumes that a show known so much for its satirical political humour could reach creative heights back in the late 80s that we're still discussing nearly 40 years later. Goodbye and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Okay, get back in here. All right, let's get down to business. One doesn't necessarily need to know the complete ins and outs of the Iran-Contra scandal or Reagan's US presidency to appreciate President Reagan mastermind. There's still a lot about the Iran-Nicaragua operation I just don't understand. And you don't need to understand. I'm the president. Only I need to understand. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sure, it helps to understand the context, but the joke is clear. A dichotomy of this world's leaders, public and private personas. Phil Hartman masters both the befuddled Grandpa Reagan and the devious mastermind Reagan with his performance. Well, how did I come out? Very well. Well, does it say I approve shipments of arms to Iran? Ah, uh, yes it does. Did I? It's honestly scary how laser-focused Hartman is when he dives into his hard-ass cowboy Ronnie shtick. So much so that it makes his softer doppelganger feel even more disingenuous and evil. I'm telling you, I know people. Number 7. The Coneheads The Coneheads were part of another recurring SNL sketch that was adapted into a feature film, a fan favourite that dates back to the 1970s. Hi, Mom. Hello, my young one. How is school today? This wig was ineffective. The kids at school know that I am different from them. It's really bugging me. Dan Aykroyd, Jane Curtin and Lorraine Newman portray the titular space aliens and do so with tons of charm and genuine warmth. A 2022 article from UltimateClassicRock.com detailed Aykroyd's inspiration for the sketch, i.e. being on a whole lot of pot. 20 Earth years ago, the five high masters of Remulac dispatched a fleet of star cruisers to this solar system. Star cruisers? Metallic disks powered by an anti-gravity field reactor. 
flying saucers, dear. We totally get how it appealed to a 1970s audience that was largely receptive to the sort of stoner humor that classic SNL could often vibe with during this time. Disney World? Yes. A vast man-made construction which duplicates human psychosexual experiences through tension-releasing fantasy mechanisms. The Coneheads have their own vernacular and idiosyncratic ways of interfacing with us Earthlings. One thing remains constant, however, they always make us laugh. Just out of curiosity, Beldar, are you uh, circus folk? Lemgar, Carnian, them map beps. Number 6. Baba Wawa. Not every celebrity takes kindly to SNL's not ready for primetime players mimicking them on national television. Sometimes controversial, but to my mind, a weary regular guy. <laughs> Secretary of State Dr. Henry Kissinger. Journalistic icon Barbara Walters was one of those celebrities. Well, at least at first. Walters eventually couldn't help but join the laughter as SNL's audience cackled alongside Gilda Radner's iconic portrayal on screen. Dr. Kissinger, in conclusion, there is one thing that really, really irritates me about you. Uh, after 40 years of being in this country, why do you still talk with that silly, silly accent? Baba Wawa was a not-so-gentle needling of Walter's noticeable speech patterns and diction. And I have had everything wefted. You mean you've had your legs wefted? The scene also parodied the real-life Walter's penchant for soft focus lighting. Meanwhile, Radna herself remained charming through it all. And it's perhaps this charm that eventually helped Walters come to terms with her immortalization on the Saturday Night Live stage. It's the only reason I'm weaving. Really. <laughs> Number 5. Church Chat Every SNL performer hopes for a breakout original character. Dana Carvey's church lady, however, just has to be one for the ages. Well, there's been so much going on, we have so much to talk about tonight, so let's just get right to it. Alrighty. As the host of Church Chat, Carvey's Enid Strict did a marvellous little jig known as the Superior Dance. But that was about it as far as her goodwill goes. Well, it's just quite frankly, I find this whole Satan thing kind of silly. Oh. Well, perhaps you'd find burning an eternal hellfire silly as well. The church lady only invited guests onto the church chat stage to admonish them for their sinful lifestyles. Well, apparently some of us do our thinking below the Bible belt. Carvey brought a smug sense of self-satisfaction to the character, but never made the church lady so reprehensible that she couldn't connect with the SNL audience. The end results were pure comedy gold. Well, when trouble erupts, power corrupts. And I'm sure you'll all agree I'm just a little bit superior to all of thee. Okay, hit it, Pearl. Number four, the French chef. Julia Child was another renowned celebrity who was able to handle the parodic barbs sent her way from Saturday Night Live. Welcome. I'm Julia Child. Today we're going to make a holiday feast or Le Fête Dolide. And we're going to start with half bone chicken or poulard. Demi de Saucen. Of course, it helped that Dan Aykroyd's portrayal of the iconic celebrity chef came from a place of love and respect. That said, Child's unique cadence, voice, and mannerisms made her ripe for parody. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Poulard Demi de Saucen. The French chef skit doesn't disappoint in this regard either, as Aykroyd completely nails the impression. Beyond this, however, SNL's version of Julia Child seems to be a bit accident prone. The chef cuts herself in an exaggerated, bloody fashion, yet Child carries on instructing. Now, every kitchen should have the emergency number written on its side. Not only on surviving a kitchen accident, but also hammering home her encyclopedic knowledge of liver and its many uses in the kitchen. I recommend no natural coagulants such as chicken liver. Another reason not to throw away the liver. Number three, Nick the Lounge Singer. It's difficult to explain to those who weren't there about lounge culture and the lizards who often frequented these dark, smoky establishments. Welcome to the Potter Room, everybody, up here at beautiful Meatloaf Mountain. 
I'm Nick Winters, and I'm here to entertain you, so sit back, have a hot buttered rum, and let it happen. Just trust us when we say that SNL skits like the Fest Drunk Brothers and Bill Murray's Nick the Lounge Singer embody the aesthetic perfectly. Ah, oh, Star Wars! Nothing but Star Wars! Murray, in particular, embodies those resilient souls who plied their musical wares to lounge audiences who probably couldn't have cared less. Oh, we don't ask for experience. We give it. Still, singers like Nick remain steadfast, singing their hearts out as if they're playing the shiniest Las Vegas showroom, even if in reality they're probably just in some dump off the strip. My seventh winner up here, Star Wars! Number 2. The Blues Brothers Is there any SNL skit from the 1970s that better encapsulates that show's breakout success than The Blues Brothers? I said, well, baby. You know, when you bend over, I see every bit of Christmas, and when you bend back, I'm looking right into the new year. The original characters, played by Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, were given so much depth and backstory that the Saturday Night Live faithful felt connected almost immediately. Jake and Elwood Blues have charisma and coolness personified, whether they're singing classic blues and soul songs or hitting the road at 100 miles per hour. The sketches were so popular that the Blues Brothers earned their own film in 1980. 106 miles to Chicago, we got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. By that point, they'd already soared past fan favorite status and lived rent free as total SNL icons. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions Ed Grimley. Martin Short creates a character for the ages. Thank you for being so decent, I must say. The stand ups. What is the deal with all of these Seinfeld impersonators? I hate them all, but look at this. 99% fat-free milk. Where's the other 1%? Olympia Cafe. A diner order enters the pop culture lexicon. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, two Pepsi, one chip. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, two Pepsi, one chip. Master Thespian. John Lovitz makes us laugh with a single word. Acting. Sprockets. Craftwork, Krautrock, and every German stereotype in between. Your story has become tiresome. Now's the time on Sprocket for me, die! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood The sixth season of Saturday Night Live enjoys a contentious and controversial reputation amongst fans, but this sketch proves that even a broken clock is right twice a day. Hi, baby girl. I'm all alone today, but that don't mean you can stay too long, because my wife will be home from work soon. Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood does exactly what you think it's going to do. Parody Mr. Rogers in a hilariously skewed and funny fashion. Who can that be? I'll go and check. Eddie Murphy's Mr. Robinson largely speaks with the sort of down-to-earth, genteel mannerisms of our beloved PBS host. But this ain't exactly a safe neighborhood, you dig? Can you use this word in a sentence, boys and girls? Ransom. This could have been a very one-note sort of sketch, but Murphy brings so much personality to the role that even the real-life Mr. Rogers was a fan. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll come back home tomorrow in the coast. Is clear. Goodbye, buddy. Can you remember the first time you were allowed to stay up late and watch SNL? Let us know in the comments. It came from beyond the grave. A creature so rude, so inconsiderate, they thought it would never leave. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.